Hey, I'm the cat toy lady. So today I'm teaching how to make clay paw prints. Yes, we usually think of this during sad times. It doesn't have to be for just when we are saying goodbye to our babies. It can be for remembering kittens when their toes are so small and cute or a significant milestone like a one year birthday. And yes, you would think this is kind of a straightforward thing, but really it's not. After 22 years of being a vet tech and over five years of doing in-home euthanasias, and a lot of them, unfortunately, I kind of have a knack for doing a really pretty paw print. And yes, sadly, it's a little bit easier when they are unconscious or asleep or no longer with us. Moving pets make it a little bit more difficult, but you can always do it over and over again until you get it just right. So I'm going to share the steps that I use for making a good paw print. There can be other steps out there, other different tricks, but this is just what works best for me. There are two types of clay that I recommend, basic air dry clay and foam air dry clay. I do stay away from the type that has to be baked just because it can shatter or crack in the oven. And I've had a few clients that afterwards told us that they kind of burned them. So the one I have here today is the basic air dry. It's just some generic brand off Amazon. And then another one of my tricks, plastic bags, like the Ziploc style. You can use saran wrap, but it kind of leaves some wrinkles behind. So plastic bag is just a little bit more durable and the gallon size helps so you don't accidentally get that zipper part in the paw print. Then you need two hard surfaces, a tabletop, a countertop, and a book, something that you can lift up and move easily. I chose my family album just because it's lightweight and going to be perfect and won't bend. Don't try to use cardboard or anything that's kind of soft. You need something really sturdy, something to clean the paws if they're dirty and your hands afterwards, a toothpick so you can write their name afterwards, the date, anything like that, and then something to make it have a nice pretty edge. For cats, I like biscuit cutters, but if you don't have anything like that, a mason jar lid, or you want a, if you use a coffee cup or a mug, you want something with a straight side, nothing that's tapered, because then you get a weird edge to it. So a nice straight edge mug. If you happen to have a big dog, you can use something like a bowl and just set the bowl down lightly and trace around it with a knife. Let's get started. There's not a perfect amount of clay to use. I always use a little bit more than I think I'll actually need just so I can trim off the edges and make it nice and pretty. And for that basic air dry clay, you wanna knead it a lot. You wanna soften it up, get it nice and malleable. So after a bit of kneading, start rolling it into a ball. You can use a countertop, your hands, whatever starts making it into a nice round ball. If it has a little lump to it, it's okay. Because again, you're cutting off the edges. But the idea is to get any of the creases that you see kind of rolled out of it. There we go. And if your Ziploc baggie has writing on it, I've already learned the hard way. Go ahead and make sure that is not the side that is facing towards your clay. So put that side down. Put your clay in the direct center, making sure your second bag the printed part is not touching it. It's on the opposite side. And then you're just going to put light, slow pressure. Do not go fast or the edges crack a lot. And you're just going to push down. For a cat, I'd say about a quarter of an inch to a third of an inch. It's kind of a, a good depth to, to go. Uh, for a dog, more like quarter inch to half an inch. If you have a really big paw, you may need just a little bit thicker, but really the goal is to go with the paw about halfway through the clay. So if you think that you're going to be pushing down a lot and have to have more of depth to it, then just give yourself more wiggle room. And if you can see, it's starting to get a little hard to push down. It's only about an inch thick right now. So one of the tricks is to kind of take your book or whatever you're using and rotate it kind of wiggle it around in a circle and that will help even everything out and start squishing it without having to really put a lot of pressure. All right, so mine's about a quarter of an inch. So you can see, you can see the edges did crack a little. That's to be expected. That's why we're cutting it off. That way it's nice and pretty. 
should you for some reason not use enough clay and need to not be able to cut it, you can wet your finger and go along the edge and start smoothing it out. And that gets rid of all the imperfections. For right now, I'm just going to rub my finger back and forth using the heat of my finger to really smooth out the clay on top. Get rid of all the little divots and the wrinkles from trying to make it into a nice flat surface. You don't really want to wet the top of it just because that gives more of a chance of when you push the paw in of the paw getting stuck to the material and not being able to come out cleanly. Only use the water for the edges. And this is where you can use a sink or baby wipes and clean yourself up. So if you're doing this on a baby that's awake, you want to have food to kind of distract them and keep them in one place or someone to help you out by holding them and extending their arm for you. Since it's just me, we have treats. All right, now I have Ellie Mae kind of distracted, licking up some treats. And I am going to just bring it over next to where she's eating. And take her paw, and I'm going to push down the pad first and then each toe bean individually. It's okay, Ellie. And then each claw. You can see she was a little not happy about having her toes pushed down. That's why the distraction of food is really good. All right, so you can see <laughs> Ellie. This is her paw print. And she is very proud of it, can't you tell? So the really big trick to it is making sure that you get that big pad first and you squish it down as hard as you can without hurting a paw into the clay. Then you take a toe bean and you push it down and then separately you push the toenail in and you do that with each toe bean and you can even get the dew claw in if they let you. So now I'm going to take my biscuit cutter and I'm just going to center it around her paw depending on where you want to write is where you center the paw itself. I think I'm going to write her name in the top. So I'm going to center it with the base of that big pad as the bottom of it. Go. And then to get it to release, you just gently press all around the edge, but not hard. That way you don't leave your fingerprints in it. And then it just pops out. There we go. And you can see it's a really hard edge that I'm going to go through and smooth out. So I'm just going to get my finger a little damp and just go along the edge and soften how hard that line is. If your clay starts drying out a bit too much or you feel like your finger is not doing enough, you can take a damp paper towel on your finger, just like this, and use it to soften the edge. And if you get any imperfections that you don't like, if maybe you mess up just a little, but it's something that's just a hairline of an issue, you can still take that same wet paper towel and just smooth out whatever you do not like. You can take a straw before it's dried and also put a hole, but leave at least a quarter of an inch from the edge. That way it can actually support being held up by a ribbon. But for this, I'm not going to make it into an ornament, so I'm not putting a hole in it. So there you go, Ellie Mae. So here's my list of extra pointers. Start with dry paws. If Again, if they're sweaty or sticky from being cleaned, they're going to stick to the clay and when you go to lift up the paw the clay is going to lift up too number two if it's a really fuzzy foot and you want a very detailed paw print you can shave the foot that way you get a nice clean print some people love the look and the texture of the fur being imprinted too that is up to you number three front feet usually make the prettier paw prints not always but most of the time if you're trying this on an animal that's awake and hyper and happy, 
doesn't really want their leg help, kind of like Ellie today. Food motivation is a great way to keep them in one place, but also while they're resting, just slide up to them, have the paw print ready sitting on a book. That way you can just use the book as your tabletop and then you can push the paw in with this as your hard surface and you can do it anywhere in the house. And it's much easier when they are willing and want to cooperate, trust me. The last tip is when the clay dries, it is going to rise slightly, not a ton, unless it's the air dry foam clay, that one rises a good bit. So make your paw print deeper than you think it needs to be, just because as it does settle, it's going to rise just a little and you might lose some of the detail that you're looking for. So I hope this helps you when you wanna make a keepsake. And there are metal stamps that you can buy to be able to imprint the name instead of having to write it out if you want it to be neater. And I've even seen clients paint afterwards and let you know the kids paint it or they decorate it themselves, make do just a glitter coating in the paw part of the print or the whole thing. And I've even seen where they've taken a trimming of hair and stuck the hair into part of the clay too. And last but not least, follow the directions on the dry time on your clay. Each one's a little bit different, but word to the wise, if you leave it on a surface, like a plastic bag, once you think it is completely dried, flip it over and give it another 24 hours. Sometimes where that plastic is or the very center on the back, it doesn't dry all the way. So thank you for joining me today and go play with your cat and maybe push their paw into some clay. Bye.